Hello everyone, welcome back to HBW TV. I'm Jo Chen, your host for today. So I'm sure that many of you are well aware of the serious problems of diabetes. In Malaysia, well not only in Malaysia, but in many countries as well. So joining us here today, we have Dr. Sri, Dr. Victor T, Dr. Rohan and Mr. Nazio here to have a panel discussion on diabetes and its complication. Now let's welcome all of them. Dr. T, you may take over. We are focusing on diabetes today because diabetes is an increasingly serious problem for almost all the countries in the world. In Malaysia itself, we are having 18% of our population suffering from diabetes. And we have to really relook at the problem and see how we can tackle the problem best. Um, a lot of focus is focused on the drug, but we should be looking at the root cause of the problem, which is actually our lifestyle and the food we eat. Thank you, Dr. Rohan, for uh, coming all the way here from India to share with us in this uh, discussion. Uh, perhaps Dr. Rohan would like to share with us uh, what is happening in India. Sure. Hi, uh, my name is Dr. Rohan Sequera, like you've introduced me, and I'm an endocrinologist uh, practicing uh, in endocrinology for the last 25 years. I've uh, worked for some time in the US and then now back in India for some time. And uh, with this, uh, with what Dr. T said, I, I really do agree with what you said. Diabetes has been increasing over the last 20 years. There was a time when diabetes was a disease of somebody who was retiring from his job. But now if you look at the scenario, diabetes is more seen among young boys and girls who are going to college. And you see them in their early 30s, in their early 40s, and they're coming to clinics and they're finding themselves with high sugars. And you actually said a very important thing is why is this moving in a younger generation? And uh, that is something very concerning. Today in the world we have 63 million diabetics and that and 78 million pre-diabetics. Now this number is supposed to and they are expecting these numbers to double in the next 10 years which means your 18% in Malaysia could very well become 32 to 40% which is equal to an epidemic. So that is really, really concerning and uh, the WHO has taken this very seriously and they have considered NCD or non-communicable diseases as the next focus of their initiative all over the world. And uh, I think one of the main reasons for diabetes being where it is right now is because of a higher source of income for the generations which are coming, access to foods which are highly processed. Uh, very active lifestyle, uh, social lifestyles. People are having more to eat, more to drink, uh, less of concentration on the quality of food and also a very, very unhealthy sedentary lifestyle. You hardly see anybody working out, you hardly see anybody exercising. If you if you ask the next generation how much of exercise they put in, it's, it's hardly any amount. So when you look at the cumulative effect of whatever they are doing, it's not a surprise that they're ending up with obesity, they're ending up with diabetes, they're ending up with blood pressure, and they're ending up in cardiac disease at a much younger age than what our parents had experienced. Great. I think I would like to hear a little bit more from uh, Dr. Dr. Sri here. And he's uh, pretty much uh, interested to speak uh, on the diabetics and bone care. Uh, quite an interesting speak. And first of all, uh, I'd like to say uh, welcome and it's a great privilege to share the same platform with you. I'm not sure whether we are aware or not that uh, Rohan was uh, nominated as, a, as a top 20 best doctors by Outpost. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> so, yes, of course, I agree with Dr. T about uh, diabetes uh, becoming an increasing problem, not only in Malaysia, all over the world. And, of course, uh, the management part uh, is now something that we consider because Everyone thinks uh, when it comes to diabetes, you start with medication, insulin, and all this and all, but uh, nobody's uh, really considering about prevention. The most important is preve prevention. We, we know this, uh, there's, there's no way you can uh, stop diabetes from evolving. But of course, you have to look into uh, prevention. Early prevention, uh, Dr. Rowan said about pre-diabetes uh, pre -diabetes and all. Earlier, nobody uh, really uh, recognized pre-diabetes. You know, now it's it's been accepted that uh, you should screen for pre-diabetes 
and then you should uh, screen them and then uh, make uh, 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 counsel them into diet and all these things. But there's also called uh, prevention. That means you can anticipate somebody is going to uh, get diabetes or you know the, the strong history of family, family history. There's uh, chances, high chances in this uh, disease coming in the family. So you can prevent it in early stage itself. Few studies have also shown that uh, the formula milks, you know, the milks are also the main cause of uh, diabetes in the younger children. You know, those who have been uh, added on with a lot of uh, DHAs, AAs and all these things, the high sugar, uh, this predisposes to uh, uh, chances of high diabetes in a younger age. And then coming to the complications of diabetes. Okay? So now, the biggest complication of diabetes, we have several complications, but I, what I face is the diabetic foot ulcers. You know, increasing. A uh, few years back, every 30 seconds, there was somebody in, around the world who was losing, losing a limb. But with all the advances in uh, uh, in uh, wound care, with all the wound care, yet instead of becoming uh, lesser, the uh, time of amputation has become 20 seconds. From 30 seconds, it has become 20 seconds around the world. Somebody's losing the limb. You know, this is due to the, yes, the amputation is increasing. Yes, amputation. We are trying to prevent amputation. We are trying to save a limb from amputation. We have all the researches being done to save a limb, but yet due to the complications, uh, unawareness of the uh, public, the more and more uh, they are losing more and more limbs due to the complication of diabetes. This is what we need to need to address urgently. And one of the reasons, uh, one of the one of the things which is very important to realize is what uh, we call as medical inertia is the failure of primary consultants who are treating patients in diabetes to not bring it under control as fast as possible. Patients are being allowed, or rather I wouldn't say being allowed, but patients are uncontrolled with their HbA1c's or three-month average for a longer period of time. So there is something in diabetes which we call the legacy effect. What is a legacy effect? A legacy effect is something which I get as a benefit earlier in in life, which benefits me at a later. Let's say I get hundred thousand dollars when I'm twenty five. I can utilize that hundred thousand dollars when I'm twenty five to benefit me when I'm fifty because I can educate myself. I can do many things for myself at that earlier phase. So when a patient has been detected to have type two diabetes, it is very important to bring the patient as soon as possible into the controlled value of 6 to 7 that is your HbA1c the faster you bring the patient to the control value and maintain him at that level the lesser complications they have as the times go by but unfortunately that control does not happen and that's what we call medical inertia and I think uh, that attitude should be the focus of a government program to help them get more of control in the patients yeah, I think uh, one another point to emphasize is that most of these diabetes that we are talking about, 18%, most of them are type 2 diabetes. Type 2 diabetes are different from type 1. Type 1 diabetes, most of them are very young. They are born with uh, deficiency in insulin. So they, are, they require insulin for the treatment. But the diabetes that we are generally referring to now that is increasing in incidence is the type 2 diabetes where they are resistant to insulin. Meaning um, the, the, the cells, the muscle cells as well as the fat cells are not responding to insulin. Why does this happen? We have to really understand this to appreciate and to also know how we can manage ourselves or we can manage the patient. If the patient is taking a lot of glucose or sugar or carbohydrate, this is the main cause. It is because of excess carbohydrate and glucose. The cells are receiving too much and they don't want any more. So insulins are sending in all this glucose to the cells, whether it's the muscle cells or the fat cells. The cells are saying no, so they develop insulin resistance. So how are we going to manage this group of patients? If you understand this, then the root cause of the problem is really high sugar, the, the intake of sugar and carbohydrates. So we should be tackling the root cause. That, that means now the recent science, the new science they are talking about, uh, you know, caloric restriction, you know, uh, controlling sugar intake. This is very important. In fact, 
there are new methods that are being introduced which are very natural like uh, time restricted eating meaning eating for eight hours and then the other 16 hours water fasting not taking anything except water and when your body has a phase whereby you your your glucose goes down effectively the cells will be responsive to insulin again so they need not depend so much on the medication and perhaps if they do it diligently they are able to take off some of the medication or even all the medicines if the diabetes is not so bad so we really got to understand that diabetes type most of the diabetes that uh, that is increasing now is a type 2 diabetes and the way to tackle this is to go to the root cause that is restriction of calories and sugar um, what have you, uh, perhaps uh, Dr. Rohan would like to add well, on to this. I completely agree with you and a very important uh, factor which also adds to this is obesity and type 2 diabetes has also been linked to a genetic cause and if you see among all the populations and all the races in the world uh, today actually the world's number one uh, diabetic country or the diabetic capital of the world today is China number two is India I'm talking about all over the world uh, but if you look at the real genetics the Chinese diabetics and the Indian diabetics have a huge difference in the number of complications Chinese diabetics have lesser amount of cardiac disease compared to patients who have an Indian origin so if your genetics also plays a role in the way you get complications that is something which you need to know um, there is a special genetic uh, genote we call it a genotype among Indian patients or patients of Indian origin it's called the Indian phenotype where if you look at the way uh, the Indian races it's more of a pear shaped body right it's a thin uh, a thin top a uh, slightly bigger uh, middle portion and very thin legs that's the way the genetics are and these patients usually have a higher incidence of cardiac disease compared to the other races if you look at Korea if you look at uh, Thailand if you look at Cambodia if you look at uh, Malaysia by itself and if you look at uh, China Australia, the Caucasian groups and the Indian groups, you'll find diabetes and cardiovascular disease primarily among the Indian patients compared to the other other races. It makes a lot of sense, especially when you have a multicultural society in Malaysia. Which patients do you focus on more? Who have a higher risk of uh, complication profile? Now, Dr. Sri, I have been told, is one of the top foot care surgeons in Malaysia, and he's done some fantastic work. And I've seen some of his pictures, and I must really say, I mean, you know, very, I was very surprised to see the wonderful work that Dr. Sri has done, and I would love to associate with him in future. But uh, I'm sure you must have seen all the patients who came to you with uh, diabetic foot definitely were not under control yeah. or they you know and there is an association if you have uh, there is a research which was published by Harvard that said that if you have a diabetic foot there is a 95 percent chance that the arteries and the retina in your eyes have also been affected so Dr. Sri would you want to uh, uh, like talk about diabetic foot complications and how you have uh, what has been your uh, experience from a Malaysian context you know and especially with regards to the control of their sugars. Of course, uh, when patients come to me with a diabetic food, it's already in, a, in a quite a bad stage where they're about to lose their limbs. Of course, the main main problem is always the sugar. The sugar is never controlled. Right. Of course, the stress factor is there. Then uh, they also have depression. You know? And then uh, they most of them, they don't eat properly or eat too much. Then uh, neglect their medication. To the point where they, they come to the point where they uh, they believe it's the end. You know, in Malaysia, I mean, most of the country, the moment you lose a toe or you find a wound, they are psychologically, they already believe they're going to lose a leg and right. they go into depression and they think it's the end of the world, you know. And uh, it's a practice now that uh, when you present with the diabetic food, the first thing, option they give you is amputate. That's the easiest choice than salvaging the limb. So, the first thing we have to do is to... In my clinic, I make sure the patient brings their medications. I go through all their medications. And if I need to make adjustment, I do the adjustment. Whatever insulins they are taking, whatever oral medication they are taking, I go to, we do a proper uh, blood test to make sure everything is covered. Then we get the ECG done, of course, because diabetes, you know very clearly there will be some complication, cardiac complications. We examine thoroughly from toe, head to toe. The eye, the sensation is very, it's a must, of course. 
mm-hmm. peripheral sensations, blood flow, everything before uh, we start our treatment. Because if you start the treatment without uh, checking the blood flow and all, the treatment is going to be a waste. Patient is going to keep coming to you for treatment and the wound is not going to heal unless you correct all the other other complications. Mm-hmm. So when you treat, when you address all these issues, the wound somehow heals faster and better. Uh, Dr. Sri was talking about diabetic food, and that is only one complication. What needs to be emphasized also is uh, the, the diabetes is a multi-system disease, and if it's not controlled from <coughs> early and the, the control is not good, <coughs> then it will lead to multi-systemic complication. And you know that why all this happens is because the small arteries are uh, degenerates with persistent high glucose right. that is not controlled. So all these small vessels are found in the eye, in the kidney, around the nerve, it's a network of uh, blood vessels and obviously to the periphery of your body, that is your fingers and especially your legs. Huh? So when one of the vessels, when any part of your body is affected, one organ is affected, it also signifies that the rest of the systems are also affected to a large extent. So we have to be very careful not to reach to any of this stage. Uh, preventive measure is still the most important and then if you have the diabetes already set in then early treatment and early control is especially important to avoid all the complications um, um, it is not good when you start having one complication because you can predict that the other systems are also affected whether you're going to get blind or the kidney going to fail or you're going to get leg ulcers gangrene of the foot um, all this will set in. So uh, we really have to, you know, in the first part, we have to prevent ourselves from getting diabetes. That is through dietary control as well as increasing our physical activity. And if you are diagnosed to, be, to, to have diabetes, you have to diagnose it early. Maybe go for a check, check up from time to time, especially when you have family history or you are obese or there are indicators that you may be diabetes or you are having symptoms of thirst or tiredness or sudden loss of weight, you should go for a checkup. And when you and early diagnosis is important because when you don't know about the disease, you wouldn't take action to treat yourself or to educate yourself. And when you have your diagnosed to have the disease, then the next most important thing is obviously to achieve good control of the diabetes so that you don't get the complication or you delay the complication. Uh, the most important thing of all is obviously look at the root cause and remove remove the root cause. Um, Great. So, um, okay, Dr. Rohan, what would be your takeaway message in diabetic control? 75% of all diabetics will develop heart disease. And that is something which is really scary. Because we only see the heart disease. You know, the heart disease is like a lion. It makes a lot of noise. People get scared of the lion. But uh, diabetes is like a snake. You can't see it. It's there in the grass. But when it's, it just comes and bites you, that's when you really understand how bad it is. So the take home message, what I would say is everything, all studies all over the world, every university, every association, every group of doctors, everywhere all over the world have all recommended that control your diet, like what Dr. T said, control your diet, have an active lifestyle. The problem is that the reason why diabetes and blood pressure is running in our family is because nobody's running in the family. Nobody's gone for an exercise, nobody's gone for a walk, nobody's gone for an exercise. So if you don't run, the diabetes will run in your family. So you have to have at least one form of exercise every day. Eat healthy, have a good diet, have a good dietary control, speak to a dietitian, get a good control done. Make sure if your doctor does not control your diabetes, be after him or find someone who is going to bring your diabetes under control because the faster your control is, the lesser complications are. And that's that's my take-home message for the patients would be to control your diet. Okay, thank you Dr. Rohan for wrapping the last question. So, well, that's it for today. We thank the doctors for their time today. As prevention is better than cure, we hope this discussion today brings new insights to all of you watching on diabetes and its complications. Thanks for watching HPW TV and we hope to see you again.